Good morning and thank you for joining us on Africa This Morning. It is the 25th of April 2014. Let's start the bulletin with a look at the top stories. Escalation in terror. Police in Kenya impound an abandoned vehicle near a police station where four people died after a blast. Beefing up security in Kenya. Stern warning to criminals as 1,500 GSC recruits graduate in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Palestinian reconciliation. Rival Palestinian factions Fatah and Hamas agree to form a government of national unity. Bomb experts have impounded a vehicle that was suspected to have explosives in Kenya's Isili estate. The vehicle was, according, which according to witnesses, was left outside a residential building last night and two unknown, by two unknown people that raised suspicion among the members of public who reported the issue to the police. Ebru Africa's news reporter Agnes Kakunga was at the scene and brought us the following story. Police officers had earlier stopped the saloon car after its occupants broke the law and were taking them for questioning when the bomb exploded. Kenyans are increasingly alarmed at the relative ease at which militants and radicalized youth are able to carry out deadly strikes in the heart of Kenya, East Africa's biggest economy. It was not immediately clear who was behind the attack. Pangani is located next to Nairobi's Isili district, an area populated by Somalis and targeted in past bomb and grenade attacks. A second controlled detonation was carried out by a bomb disposal officer shortly after the initial blast. It is common for Kenyan police to demand a ride back to the police stations in vehicles they have stopped. Still on security matters in the country, Kenya has had a series of terror attacks since 1998 when the U.S. Embassy in the country was bombed. Most of the terrorists are believed to be from the Al-Shabaab group and following the enrollment of the Kenya Defense Forces into AMISOM in Somalia to help bring peace in the Horn of Africa, the Al-Shabaab have retaliated by carrying out sporadic terror attacks on Kenyan soil. We now take a look at the chronology of these terror acts. Kenya started experiencing the first major terror attack in 1998 when the United States Embassy was bombed, leaving hundreds of people killed in simultaneous bomb explosions. In 2002, a Mombasa hotel was bombed. The blast occurred just after some 60 visitors had checked into the hotel, all of them from Israel. So my point of on 4th January 2013, two people were killed and seven wounded in a grenade attack at Tagali area in Garise. The grenade was hurled from a saloon ke at a tent where people were chewing cut. On January 7, 2013, a grenade was thrown into a police vehicle as it drove past a crowd along a mere road near the local district officer's office. On the evening of 9th January 2013, two grenades were thrown into the Wild Food Program compound in Mandura town. There were no injuries reported. The blast occurred as a group of worshippers were leaving a nearby mosque after their prayers. On 16th January, suspected militants shot dead five people and injured three others at a restaurant in the eastern city of Garissa. Two men believed to be suicide bombers of Somali origin died on the morning of 17th January 2013 after improvised explosive devices went off in Hajera refugee camp in Dadaab. On 31st January, a blast injured three Kenyan policemen in the Gahali area of the northern town of Dadaab. On 2nd February, a KDF soldier was killed in a blast in Wajir after a terrorist who appeared to know him hurled a grenade at the man and his girlfriend. The officer was among several people on a break from the coordinated Linda Inchi operation in southern Somalia between the Somali military and Kenyan forces against the Al-Shabaab insurgents. On the evening of 18th April, four armed men walked into the Kwachegi Hotel in Garise and started shooting, killing at least six people and leaving others seriously wounded. On 9th June, nearly simultaneous evening attacks in Isili, Nairobi and Likoni, Mombasa left at least 15 people injured. On the 21st September 2013, armed gunmen attacked an upscale shopping mall in Nairobi, killing at least 60 people and injuring more than 150. 
On 13 December 2013, double blast in the northeastern town of Wajir killed one individual and wounded at least three other people. On 14 December 2013, a hand grenade was thrown onto a minibus in Isli. The Saturday evening explosion killed at least four people and wounded 36 others. It was the fourth such attack to occur during the 50th anniversary week of Kenya's independence. In the year 2014, three attackers hurled a grenade into the Tandu River in the Kenyan resort town of Diani, south of the port city of Mombasa, wounding 10 people in the 2nd of January. In March, a pair of explosions killed six people in Isli estate. Two gunmen were later to storm a packed church near the Kenyan coastal city of Mombasa and killed three people. Yesterday, a car bomb exploded outside a police station in the Kenyan capital Nairobi, killing four people. The Kenyan government says it will not relent in its war against terrorism. Speaking during a General Service Unis Pass Out Parade, President Uhuru Kenyatta led top government officials in warning criminals and terrorists that the officers of the law will certainly come after them. Aneta Kisa covered the story from Embakasi. As 1,500 general service unit recruits graduated today, top government officials addressed the country's major headache, insecurity. They gave stern warnings to terrorists and other criminals. <laughs> President Uhuru Kenyatta urged Kenyans to give his government time to deal with insecurity, saying they are addressing what could be the root cause, unemployment. <laughs> We know most youth are unemployed, and that is why they are attracted to such criminal activities. We as the government are going to do everything possible to ensure the youth are employed. And as the government promised to go on with security operations across the country, Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Olelenko said they will also deal with corrupt immigration officials who have been giving travel and identification documents to criminals. <laughs> I want to send a message clear that all officers responsible for this process, starting from the assistant chiefs to the issuing officers, will be held accountable for any identification document that land in the wrong hands and will be taken appropriate actions against, against them according to the law. And that I will discharge all the duties of a police officer. Deputy President William Ruto promised to improve the working conditions of police officers. There is a robust security policy that will ensure that our security officers have access to better housing, modern equipment, better transport, and better terms of service. The president assured that the ongoing security operations dubbed Usalama Watch was not targeting any community or religion as speculated, saying insecurity was greatly affecting the country's economy. that this is not a war against any religion nor against any community. This is a war against criminals who would do harm to their fellow Kenyans. This is a war against those who seek to rain terror on Kenyans and who seek to make Kenyans live in fear. And this we shall not accept.
Well, this ceremony comes at a time when criminals and terrorists have made this country their playground. But top government officials have come together today in one voice, sending a stern warning to terrorists that they will not relent in the war against terror. For Ebro Africa News, I am Annette Akisa in Nairobi. Ebru Africa's Sam Gakunye had a chat with security expert George Musamali on what should be done to restore security in the country. Here is an excerpt of the interview. No, the country basically right now we are having what everybody is calling a failure from the side of the government. Is that the case and where is the government failing? Uh, when it comes to matters of terrorism, I can't say that uh, we can attribute that to government failure in addressing this matter. I think uh, the government has really tried uh, all efforts to make sure that uh, the country is secured from terror attacks. But remember, terrorism right now is becoming a global war and the Kenyan situation is becoming complicated because now it's becoming transnational. Like, for example, when we had uh, Westgate, we had people from different nationalities. We had even people from Europe. So basically, it's like Europe is exporting terror to Kenya. But I think the efforts of the government are not enough. Uh, because I believe we are using the wrong strategy in tackling this menace. Uh, for example, we are always using knee-jerk reactions whenever we have an attack, and that is why immediately after Westgate, uh, the government came up with a new strategy which they called Manyumba Kumbi, that I believe up to now Kenyans have realized it's not working. And after Likoni, we had...